Okay, Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RS. Be my first ride on this. We'll see how it goes. I'm very keen to get onto this. Quite nice, comfy, good height for me. Interesting sound. Ah, this is like Tuono levels of steering lock. Quite a muted sound from the exhaust. I hope I'm recording. Yes. Okay, let's go. So we are in rider mode. Um, not too sure what the settings are on this. Let's do that up, yeah. I must say, initial impressions of the riding position, extremely comfortable. Um, it feels kind of, oh, feels kind of like the street triple. Um, slightly lent over the bars. The bars don't actually feel too wide, which is nice. Um, but quite a nice neutral position, very comfortable. And this is literally the first time I've ridden this bike. Okay. Now that I'm coming off the highway, uh, I can just talk about the <coughs> how it was to cruise a bit. Uh, I've been on the highway for about 20 kilometers now from the city. Um, at higher speeds, sort of around 120 to 150, there's quite a lot of wind pressure on your arms, um, like on this part of your arms, uh, as well as your helmet and your chest. Um, which uh, and your neck I can feel it feel my neck is already stiff I was pushing a little bit uh, so I think for if you're planning on doing a bit of cruising and uh, touring etc you might uh, want to think about getting a screen um, as after a while that's probably going to be uh, quite unpleasant this is quite a bumpy section of road here um, the one thing I haven't tried yet is the cruise control. So I haven't tried it at all. So let's just see how user friendly this is. So we're cruising at 95, speed limit here is 100. So set. Uh, set again. Oh, there we go. Easy as that. So set turns it on, set again, sets your speed. Uh, if we go plus. Oh, there we go, we increase the speed, we go minus, decrease the speed. Uh, okay, is that the same as my BMW? So if you just uh, roll off hard, well not hard, if you just give the throttle a bit of a forward twist, it turns off. So if we set again, it sets at 96. Um, like with most cruise controls, I'm sure if you touch the clutch or the brakes or whatever, it will go off. So let's give it a bit of clutch. Yep, there we go. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Finally at the mountain pass. Ooh, it's very cold up here. Uh, it's about, it says 12. It was 10 or 11 when I came up. But let's go. It's gonna take a bit easier on the way down. Um, I don't know what the road condition is like. Oh, these brakes are good. And the handling. so good. It's so light. It's just like a 765. Oh, it's amazing. Actually, it kind of reminds me a little bit of my 675 as well, just how flickable it is. really should have my suit here, I mean, I feel like I'm almost knee down. Oh, okay, that's snow, old man. Oh. 
second gear power unit. Everybody's out here looking at the snow. Oh, that front end is good. It's really good. Brakes are good when they heat up. I'm really regretting not bringing my suit now. This is me down city. You just play around. Oh, truck. Two trucks. You just play around in the higher RPMs. It's really good. really liking the seats. The seat is very sporty. And when you get the bike lens over, it's nice and stable. Ooh, monkeys. Very nice and stable. Um, because it's so light it does it does feel a little bit uh, like twitchy um, similar to how I felt on the Trident. Uh, I'll just put that down to me coming from the XR because the XR is very heavy, 228 kilos weight. Uh, whereas this is around 180, I think, 189. Um, oh, this is, a, this is a really good bike. I mean, I feel like I'm riding fairly quickly for the conditions what's it now 12.5 still quite cold um, I don't feel like the tires are losing any grip I do have TC off just to have a bit of power wheelies um, but other than that bike is doing fantastically oh. Okay, let's head back to the top. This Olin's is very plush. You can definitely feel it circling up these bumps nicely. That's one thing you notice right away when you get onto a bike that's got Olin's or just any any uh, top shelf suspension is the way it deals with bumps is just a lot smoother than wow look at that snow uh, it's just a lot smoother than standard suspension ever does um, and it's something you don't really notice when you're riding your personal bike you think okay the suspension is pretty good I set it up um, but then you ride something with Erlen's on and you're like oh that's amazing my suspension could be a thousand times better and more often than not it's just it's more down to the um, internals and basically just servicing your forks you'll be surprised at how much of an improvement your handling and the feel of your bike will uh, increase by just having your fork service um, this bike has obviously come uh, set as standard um, I know other journalists found that the bike was set kind of hard from the factory I don't know if this has been changed at all but I'm actually finding it quite plush uh, I've got no complaints um, it's turning amazingly I don't have any any understeer at all the front's not diving too much oh my god this is good Maybe a little, like the tiniest bit of understeer here. Uh, I'm also <coughs> kind of altering my riding style slightly because I'm in jeans. Ooh, that was close to me down. Uh, 
I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to touch my knee in jeans. They're not normal jeans, they're riding Kevlar jeans, but still, I don't really want to scrape my knee in the road. So I'm leaning the bike a little bit more than I would normally. Normally my knee would be on first. Ooh, yeah, really so good. negatives I really have is the menu is quite laggy um, as other people have said but experiencing it now for myself just um, flicking through like you can see hopefully you can see uh, just flicking through the, the speedo to that other option screen it's like quite slow it's a good second um, which you'll probably get used to but Coming from other bikes where there's no lag, it's definitely noticeable. Not a big thing, more of like a minor gripe. Um, the other one would be the buzziness of the... Ooh, false neutral. The other one would be the buzziness of the mirrors. Like, now I can basically not see anything. Um, but it's, it's kind of only in the mirrors. I can feel a little bit in my legs if I grip the tank, but it's really not that bad it only it only actually affects the mirrors um, so maybe some heavier mirrors like rizomas or CRGs or whatever if you worried about that uh, and then the standard exhaust very quiet um, basically can't hear any exhaust note um, you can hear that awesome induction sound which sounds amazing um, but yeah, the exhaust definitely needs to go. Uh, and from what I understand, if you buy a aftermarket exhaust through Triumph, they will obviously map it and everything for you, so you don't have to buy any um, tuning modules, any of that stuff. Uh, it will be fitted and mapped by the dealership, but I stand corrected on that. I could stand to be corrected. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really happy with this bike, as I've said before, and I think Triumph has hit it out of the park. It's definitely a very strong competitor to the Tuono, which is my personal yardstick, and the industry yardstick really. The Tuono has won so many Bike of the Years, Naked Bike of the Years, uh, in the shootouts. Um, I haven't ridden the V3 Super Duke, but I'm not really a Super Duke fan to be honest. I've ridden the V1 and the V2, and they just didn't really do anything for me. They are great bikes, don't get me wrong. Um, and it's definitely suits certain people's riding styles. But every time I've ridden the Super Duke, I've never gotten off it and been like, I really want that bike. Um, so I would put this above the Super Duke. then once I get to ride a 2021 or 2020 Tuono um, I can change my opinion or rating but I don't think much is going to change really oh the handling is so good um, so yeah if you're thinking about it go test ride one you won't regret it and uh, thanks for watching this video I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers!